BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 96, Coping Strategies That Don't Work. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skincare. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Today we're going to talk about coping strategies and how they can go wrong, how we develop them, but how to understand people who are what I call toxic. People who like they may they have a, a coping strategy that is either irritating or not healthy, or, but first we have to understand coping strategies in general. Okay. So in the last podcast, we talked about the Freudian theory of ego superego. And when I teach that in, in college, what I try to get my students to see uh, is an analogy uh, that makes sense to them visually. And I use the analogy of a three-cylinder engine. And so if you, if you accept for a moment the premise, it ego, ego, uh, super ego works. Mm -hmm. the, the theory is that it's like a three-cylinder engine. When all three cylinders are working, it runs very, very smoothly. That, that baby just purrs, and we're doing well. But life has ways of complicating and, and breaking down the cylinders of the engine. So if one of the cylinders, and, and any of them, or even more than one of them, can be out of whack. But if they are, it's often visible. What, what's wrong here that, you know, that we, need to, we need to tune up? So if the id cylinder is broken, what you get is a person that has no filters, no impulse control. They totally are acting out. They may be rageful. Road rage is, is an example of that. Uh, they can be abusive. They don't stop and say, my goodness, this might kill somebody. It might kill me. It might be dangerous. I don't want this to happen. This could destroy lives. They just say, that old man cut me off, and I'm going to teach him mm -hmm. a lesson. And they zoom up. They take risks. They give mm -hmm. the finger. They scream and yell. It just not, not cool. That's the it. So that's the it out of bounds. <laughs> Uh, the ego can be out of balance as well, and the ego can become so calculating and so f fact focused and problem solving focused that the person becomes what we call a talking head. They're a machine. Just, they're just a yeah. They're like a computer. They're just a machine. And when you're involved in relationships with them, you can never get to the feelings. They're right. always talking about the calculations and the data and and and. I see this a lot in marriage counseling where the woman will say, but I can't feel him. He doesn't feel anything. And he looks at her and says, I don't know what you mean. I bought you a birthday <laughs> present and I got what you want. And he's not dealing with any emotional stuff. Mm -hmm. And so his defenses protect that. That's a, that's a, a coping strategy mm -hmm. that he uses. So if he starts to have feelings that are causing him anxiety, he will suppress them and numb himself out and stay in his mind and try to problem solve his way through it because that's what he's learned to do to survive. So the worse he gets, the worse he gets, the, the more, more machine-like he so gets. So it's the opposite of what the wife wants. She wants him to be more feeling and Often. The, and the less Often. feeling and he becomes less and less and less feeling. Often that's okay. what happens and and so then they're speaking different languages together. You know, they're having different conversations at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then the superego can also get uh, broken and the anxieties from those moral messages become so great that somebody becomes just ex totally extremely focused in a, in a, a moral cause. Uh, mm -hmm. for, in, for example, if my id tells me, you know what, I want to I wanna go next door and peep in the neighbor's window. I want to watch her undress. She's really attractive, and I, she, I notice that she doesn't close her shades. That is. And I want to sneak over there, and I want to look. My ego should come in and say, you know, that's really dangerous. You could get shot. You could get arrested. You, your name would be smeared across the newspaper. You're invading her privacy. You're invading her privacy. It's not respectful of another. No, that, mm -hmm. that would be more the super okay. Uh, the super ego would say, you know, you like her as a person, her husband's your best friend, you, you know, <laughs> this is a wrong thing to do, you'll go to hell, this is bad. So, so we have that dialogue mm -hmm. in our head. So we develop defense mechanisms, our coping strategies to protect ourselves. And depending on how well they work, our lives are okay or they're not. Mm -hmm. And so one, so, so just the out of control id 
would have me sneaking over and looking in the window because mm -hmm. I want it. I want it now. It's there. It's there, right. The ego says, you know what? There's a better way to do this. There's, there's a way to get what you want. You can look at naked women that, that don't know you're looking at them, but you go on the computer and you do it you know, on the Internet. And, I mean, there are webcams where people let you do that, and they know you're doing it, and that's like, okay. So you can get the same payoff, but without the cost. That's a compromise. That's mm -hmm. a defense mechanism that protects me. Uh, the superego will chime in in the conversation and say, no, 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 that's wrong. That's sick and perverted and wicked and evil, and you shouldn't do that. As a matter of fact, nobody should do that. You should get out on an anti-porn crusade, mm -hmm. and you could you contribute money, and you elect candidates, and you pass laws. And, and by God, we're going to make sure that nobody ever peeps in a window or looks at pornography because it's a sin. So right. you just get boom, boom, boom. And mm -hmm. all of us go through life with those kinds of struggles. It may not be that particular one, but we have lives. all three pieces that are components of our personality. So how do we try to solve those and, and what works and what doesn't? Mm -hmm. I'll give you a couple of examples. Okay. Defense mechanism of reaction formation. Okay. Reaction formation is the, the defense that I use when I want to do something, but I am not willing to do it. You know, I, maybe the id wants to do it and the superego is yelling at it and so I, I go out and I join uh, the anti-porn crusade or the anti-smoking crusade mm -hmm. or I watch uh, Morning Joe in the morning and Mika is always on a crusade about sugar and soda <laughs> and, fa and, and things that uh -huh. people shouldn't be, shouldn't be eating and the government ought not to let them eat because she's really on a crusade about that. Mm -hmm probably because she really wants to eat that piece of pie and that cake, but she's not allowing herself to do that. Okay. So reaction formation is when you do that. Uh, another uh, defense mechanism that people use is projection. And I see this a lot in marriage counseling, relationship counseling, because okay. in, in, say, projection, I may want to to experiment with a new partner. I may, I'm, you know, I'd, I'd like to be with somebody different. I've been mm -hmm. married 27 years. I see somebody, they're attractive. My id is going like, oh, she, <laughs> she's not bad. And my you ego, have an interesting id. And my ego is, well, we all do. I know we If do. you learn to listen to you it, it's, to to it's there. You, you know, you may suppress it and say, yeah. oh, turn the volume down, but it, it's there. <laughs> so what happens is my supergo then comes in and says, oh, that's a bad thing. That's a wrong thing. You don't want to be that kind of person. You make commitments. Mm -hmm. You want to have integrity. You, so my defense mechanisms will, if, if I use projection, will start to project that onto my wife that she is okay. interested in yeah. the mailman, that she is making eyes at the sales clerk, mm -hmm. that she's flirting in the grocery store because she doesn't want me anymore. So I'll accuse her of that, and she hasn't got a clue. She looks at me and is like, what in the heck is wrong with about? you? You're crazy. I'm not doing that. I'm, I'm no way in heck. And I'm like, oh, 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 oh. I see it. And I, and I become, but the person doing the accusing actually believes it. Yeah. I mean, they believe that Oh, yeah, I have to believe because I cannot afford to believe that it's me. That's where my defense okay. mechanism protects me from myself. Mm -hmm. It isn't me. And, right. and men are just so chronically troubled in our society. <laughs> about being able to say, you know, this, work, this relationship's not working for me anymore, mm -hmm. and we need to figure out whether or not to end it or change mm -hmm. it in some way that it would work for me better. Mm -hmm. Men are not nearly as able to do that as women are. Women mm -hmm. are much, in my experience, 30 years of, of mm -hmm. counseling and I 60 years that. of living, women are better able to say, you know what, I'm not happy, and here's why. Mm -hmm. Men start acting out. We use our defense mm -hmm. mechanisms of, of doing these acting out things. So I'm projecting onto her, you know what, you're interested in somebody else. And then I'm using my defenses against the anxiety that is caused mm -hmm. if I think she's interested in somebody else. So I'm pouting or okay. I'm exercising all the time or I'm not coming home or, or I'm passive aggressive. You know, I, I don't call her and tell her I'm going to be late for dinner so that she's mad at me. Mm -hmm. Then she's mad at me. She yells at me. And I didn't do anything to deserve it because I was working late, making money. I never fuss at her about how she spends the money. I just bring it home and give it to her. I'm a good person. I've done no wrong. And she's being, you know, all this. And eventually, she gets so disconnected from me because I'm playing all these stupid games. Can't figure it out. That she leaves me. And then I'm in the position of being the innocent victim. See, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I knew all along she was interested in the mailman. You know, she, right. And and it all if you really get into it, 
it comes back that to explains a lot like me. this, doesn't it? <laughs> well, it happens in <laughs> because so Because it happens a lot. I this, see it so much. And the kind challenge of is to issue. how do you get an individual who's doing that to recognize that they might be doing it? Mm -hmm. Because again, most of the people that come into therapy want to come in and talk about why are all these other people in my life not getting in line and doing what I want them to do? Everybody, How come they're out of line? Everybody else is making the mistake, not Absolutely. me. So why Absolutely. are they doing that? The yes. world's wrong, but I'm right. And it, and it supports and supplements the whole victim script. So part of what we try to teach people in therapy, it, what I try to teach people in therapy is you have to look at what can you do? What are you feeling? What do you want? And is the way you're going about trying to get what you want working. Mm -hmm. Because the definition of insanity is if you <laughs> always do the same thing and expect different results. Mm -hmm. You know, you just keep, you know, light bulb burns out in your house. How many times do you go and actually flip the switch and then remind yourself, oh, the light bulb's burning out before you change it? Yeah. But you reflexively walk into a room and hit the switch. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you know consciously, mm -hmm. light bulb's burning out, I didn't change it yet. But you still hit the switch. So change the deck, I'm light. You know? I think it's easier to understand yourself and your partner or, or the people around you if you understand this process if of what they're going it. through yes. and what you're going through. Now, right. I always have a problem with people who, for some reason, and there's no visible reason, come in and start yelling at my staff. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. Because you're a nice staff. And they're being I mean, my professional staff, my and staff's they're trying and they're like going, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're, I, I don't understand what you're talking about. And yeah. they're trying to help them and they're, and, and it's just, it's usually out of the blue. It has some, it's some minor thing that should it's, not it's have like bothered that movie, anybody. Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. Uh, when Pierce Brosnan uh, is around and, and Robin Williams throws a piece of fruit and hits him and he jumps up and says, oh my God, did you see that? It was a drive-by fruiting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even remember that they, until now. They come in and they dump, they throw yeah. up on your staff because of something that's going on in their life. It's not something your staff has earned or caused. But I, I'm totally like mystified. Like I don't know how to handle it except to be, you know, I tell the staff to be calm and nice and respectful and, and try to calm them Manage down. Manage the situation. But I don't know even know how to feel about that because when that patient comes back into my office yeah. and sits down and wants help, yeah. how do I deal with her or him? I mean, how do you then process that and yeah, how say... how you as a consultant? And I come in and teach uh, you how yeah, to manage Yeah, you are it. a consultant. <laughs> this is what you do in those... But I think everyone out there is thinking, yeah. what do you do when people do the projection? And you know they're doing the projection or right. you know that they're regressing to the lowest level of response, like right. anger. I mean, that's low. That's what you learn early. You learn... It's such a great question, Kathy. And the answer comes back to people skills. It comes back to learning how to do what we call reflective listening. You are really angry today. You are really upset about that. You're unhappy about this. Uh, sometimes you have to do assertive listening. Uh, uh, excuse me, but when you yell at me, uh, when you are yelling, when you are that loud, I have trouble hearing. Okay. Because yeah. of my issues. Mm -hmm. I'm not attacking you. I shut down when someone is yelling. Mm -hmm. And I really want to hear you. So mm -hmm. I, I, I want to solve your problem. I want to help with whatever it is that's going on. Can you help me do that? And you can, can do that by lowering your voice, slowing down. Okay. Let's get some information. But, but I hear that you are upset. I hear that you're unhappy. I don't know, know why, but I want to know why. And that, it, you, you just see people melt. You can see them okay. calm down. They're going to listen. They're going to make an effort. I'm going to, I've, I've vented. I've thrown up in the bucket. Now they're going to take the bucket away and we don't have to smell it. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's that simple. Because the, the normal it, response would be to yell back. Yeah. Or the to defend or yourself. Mechanism. Or yeah. to just run zip away. out and yeah. just like say, I can't, I can't tolerate this anymore. See ya. And sometimes it gets to that when you try this and it mm -hmm. doesn't work. Sometimes it can get Or your to that. other coping strategies. You know, the, the assertive coping strategy is to do that kind of listening and mm -hmm. say, I, I recognize that you're upset and that we have a problem. I want to solve the problem because I care about our relationship. Mm -hmm. I want to fix it if we can. That's a real assertive, appropriately skilled response. Uh, a less skilled response, and it's one that I chronically have used in my life, is <laughs> deflect with humor. Mm -hmm. that, that's make, actually make you pretty laugh helpful. or make somebody else laugh about mm -hmm. it. And it solves the immediate moment. It breaks the tension. Mm -hmm. It confuses the flow of the message. It, it distracts, but it doesn't solve the problem long term. Right. But it gets you out of that emotional yeah. uproar, yourself and the person you're talking to. Right.
And, and, and a more primitive one is punch them in the nose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Pow. You can't talk to me that way. And, and all those options are available, and people mm -hmm. do them. But in a professional office, you want to manage for the general public. Mm -hmm. And you never know who the general public is going to be. Mm -hmm. How are they going to come in? What kind of mood are they in? What, what are, are their, their skill sets and their expectations? What do they know? And I figure before they've had their hormones, anything's possible because they're so miserable. Because they're out of balance. And so I'm not going to make a, I'm not going to make a judgment until after their hormones have kicked in and they're balanced yeah. in all the in all of the bodily ways so that they're balanced there. Then if they continue having these unusual outbursts that are yeah. bothering other people, then and I can't diffuse it, then then we have a problem. But I'm not going to I'm not going to make that judgment until I get their body organized. Right. right. And 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 work with them. Although while you're doing that process, you still have to manage them with reasonable boundaries and expectations. Mm -hmm. In my office, we don't cuss out the staff. If you know, I want to work mm -hmm. with you, I want to help you. Mm -hmm. I think there are issues here medically that I can be of service, mm -hmm. but in order for me to be willing to work with you, you have to control your anger. You have to okay. control your presentation. The and way that's you in approach. every part of life. Absolutely. And we've all at one time or another. You can't walked, bite mommy. <laughs> right. You can't, you can't bite mommy. Yeah. And we've all walked into somewhere when like our car wasn't ready on time or something and then yelled at the poor person that was sitting at the desk and, yeah. and then, you know, stopped and gone. Oh, super ego goes, oh, you better apologize because that was really bad. That was stupid. That <laughs> person didn't fix your car. It's not her fault, you know, and that's, you know, and it really, there's no reason to yell because you can't do anything about it anyway. My it's wife, not going to make you happier. My wife is so smooth and easy <laughs> and everybody loves her. She got a call the other day, some, somebody selling something. And she says, excuse me, my phone is on the no call list. Why are you calling me? You know, do you not use that? And the guy says, lighten up, lady. Uh, yeah, she had, went ballistic. She's yeah. like, don't you tell me to lighten up. What's your name and who's your supervisor? And he's like. I'm my own supervisor, and my name is President Obama. And he hung up. Well, we'll be calling the state of Missouri. <laughs> she did. She did. She called the Attorney General's office yeah, and filled out a complaint. That's right. Uh, but there are, you get people yeah. like that, mm -hmm. and there are ways to handle it. But even the most balanced people can get blindsided, mm -hmm. and they can react. And that's what you, you plan for the odds. You train your office. You get consultants. Mm -hmm. You say, we're going to be professional. And, you know, you can have your own personal bad day. Yeah, but well, when you're at work, you're on duty. Yeah, you can't have so a bad day So you can't bark at, at the clients. You, you can't, you know, be, and you can't respond to them when they're out of line other than to say, I need you to be in, in the appropriate box. box <laughs> I know? need to be mommy and you need to listen because this yeah. is my oh, house. That's, that's absolutely right. And that's important. But I'm, I'm not really using, I'm, I'm not really here talking about my office. I'm talking about every person yes. who works in a particular culture. Yeah. The culture has rules. Everybody has rules. Has the to. people that enter that culture, the people that work there, that's part of the ego, super mm -hmm. ego system mm -hmm. that is imposed on people and they choose to work within that system or not work within that system. Even if they're um, a client, a patient, they, if they enter and they feel uncomfortable, then that's, that may not be the right place for them. Well, but it's, it's like triage in the emergency room. Right. You know, if, if you can't get them contained enough to work with them to get their bodies better so that they have the free, their hands untied mm -hmm. and, and can change their life choices, if you can't do that, then there's a triage thing that has to happen first. They have to stop, you know, yelling at the staff. They have to stop vomiting on the desk <laughs> in order to get to the Not deeper. Not truly vomiting. Well, but emotion, emotionally vomiting. <laughs> I mean, emotionally vomiting. vomiting. Yeah, exactly. But that, but that happens in the emergency room. If I go in and I've got a broken leg and I'm bleeding from an artery, they can't set my leg or even worry about mm -hmm. my leg until they stop the bleeding That's from true. the artery. It's and so uh, as a medical officer, professional officer, you have to do the same thing. But as someone who's a mom and you're in your house, yes. I mean, I, I had the rule that if <laughs> I any... I can't hear you until you quit well, hitting your Well, you brother. know, if there were a lot of kids over, yeah. I mean, in high school, and I, you know, my rule was if any drugs hit this house, yes. that I will call the Creve Corps police and have everyone arrested. I mean, all of them. Right. And my daughter knew it, and she told everybody, and everybody knew it when they walked in the door. That was not to ever happen at my house because... I'm responsible as a physician. I don't want my license in jeopardy, and I don't want any of these children getting hurt at my house. My son. Who's so 17, that's all I can control. I can't control outside my house. My 17-year-old son says, "Dad, my friends are afraid of you." 
<laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> Good. Why? It's because you make them follow the rules. Yeah. You know, yeah. their parents overlook it. They don't see it. They kind of laugh it off. Boys will be boys. Boys will be boys. You know, you what hear yourself that? say that, have alarm <laughs> clocks go off, something's wrong. Yeah, but you know, yeah. all of the kids that were afraid of me yeah. are now kids that come oh, back yeah. from college and as adults yeah. all drop by, they drop by to have pizza, they drop by to whatever, even if my daughter's not home. They right. drop by to just have conversations with us. So sometimes having strict boundaries the frame. are mm -hmm. very good for people who are growing up and learning how to deal with their children, other people, and you know, I had a, I didn't learn that from my parents. I learned it from a woman down the street named Jerry, who was a wonderful Christian woman who loved me for whether I was good or bad. But she told me where her borders were and how she would like to have everybody behave, and she was loving, and that didn't stop her from being loving. It just you gave have, me an idea of you how, what have I to should learn. do. Somebody has to teach you how to color between the lines. That's right. And to recognize that if you choose to color outside the lines, it mm -hmm. comes at a cost. The question then is, are you willing to pay the cost? That's you know, true. Can you afford the cost of your decisions? The it's people a, who are reformers, people who are new thinkers, people who are who are um, trying to bring about change in society. They're coloring outside the they're lines. They're outside the lines. But they're and doing I, it at a risk and, and at a cost. And when I do that and have yeah. done that, I've chosen. And I know the price and I'm willing to take the price and I do it with as much kindness and um, and respect for the powers that be that don't see it the way I and do. And professionalism. I mean, one because place where you color outside the lines is to say to the medical profession and the pharmaceutical profession, women need testosterone right. replaced. That's not coloring within the lines no. of the box. Mm -mm. So you choose to color outside the line. And there's a cost-benefit ratio. There are people that don't respect what you're doing, that poo-poo it and say, oh, that doesn't work. She's just hustling for money. Mm -hmm. And there are people that say, oh, my God, you have changed my life. I mean, you go to the website, look at the testimonials. It's there. That's true. So you, at the end of the day, you have to look in the mirror and have integrity. You have right. to be in as much balance as you can be in. And what we're talking about, the reason we spent these last couple of podcasts talking about coping strategies and defense mechanisms is balance in the, it, it is not the Cartesian split. It's the duality. It's the mind and the body. Together. And we want to work on both together. So thank you for listening to our conversation. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314 314- 993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.